What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, The Walk 71 replace it with the 4, and I have my WWE TLC tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs 2014 review. Now, this pay-per-view was a decent pay-per-view. It was good. It wasn't that bad as we all thought it would be because, you know, we just had that NXT R Evolution, which blew, like, wrestling out of the water that which was a crazy um event that happened this past Thursday and people expected TLC to be bad but TLC was actually good it, it wasn't that bad but it, it, I still have problems with it but I'll get to it as we get along with it so let's get to it um as quick as possible now first we're gonna start off with the pre-show match so basically the pre-show match we had uh gold dust and stardust versus the new day and it was kofi kingston and big e who were teaming up together and not xavier woods let me close this real quick oh my gosh oh no Alright, forget about it. And they basically teamed up. Stardust looked really weird. He was wearing green, which is weird. It was, like, really weird. But anyway, I really didn't care about this match. I just watched it just to watch, just to have something to watch off, off my phone. And uh, was it the New Day won? Uh, like, we all know they were going to win because if they lose, what's the point of them even being a tag team? You got to build them up. Even though WWE is going to have them as a jobber tag team or as a mid lower status tag team, probably by after WrestleMania, probably. Yeah, after WrestleMania, I'll give it to them. After WrestleMania, like around Extreme Rules, payback around that time. But we ended up opening up the pay-per-view with an incredible ladder match between Dolph Ziggler versus Luke Harper. This was an incredible ladder match. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Dolph Ziggler had the whole crowd behind him because it was in his hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. So, shout out to Cleveland. They went crazy for Dolph Ziggler. I'm talking about when, um, when they did the announcing before the match. They went crazy for Dolph Ziggler and I was like really surprised about that for some reason I don't even know why but it's crazy but uh the winner of this match was Dolph Ziggler he is your new intercontinental champion but this match was crazy the beginning of the match Luke Harper was basically destroying Dolph Ziggler uh, basically at like the whole beginning of the match he was getting destroyed most of the match he got big boots, right hands. He got a power bomb. I think he, Dolph Ziggler was even bleeding. So that's how I knew this match was actually was gonna be a good ladder match. If you start seeing blood, because that was crazy. But Dolph, don't don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. Dolph Ziggler got his moves and he got in a super kick. He actually hit Luke Harper with the ladder, and Luke Harper actually landed on like a ladder, set it up between the ring apron and the tape and the announcer table. But it was one part that went it was crazy. Dolph Ziggler had the ladder; he was holding it outside, and Luke Harper went for that suicide dive and he hit the ladder. But Luke Harper hurt himself. But the ending of this match was a very was a good ending. I'm not gonna lie; the ending was perfect. For, the ending was perfect. So both men had two ladders set up by the center of the title so that they could each have a title and right when then right when Luke Harper was at the top, Dolph Ziggler just super kicked him off the ladder. He climbed up and grabbed the title and Dolph Ziggler got a huge pop from the crowd and everybody was literally going nuts for Dolph Ziggler. They went crazy for this man. And honestly congratulations to uh, Dolph Ziggler for winning that match because uh I didn't think he was going to win it. I thought Luke Harper was going to win because Dolph Ziggler has already won a lot of ladder matches to begin with. So I didn't even expect Dolph Ziggler to even win this match. So um, I'm surprised. I'm not, I'm not surprised, but uh, my prediction was wrong. But the next match we had, I believe, hold on, I'm trying to check these results. Hold on. Hmm. Just give me a second. I'm I'm trying to look up something. I don't like this computer. Anyway, 
My bad. Anyway, I'm I'm real, I'm real silent because I keep always. That's one thing about these about my reviews. I always forget a lot of matches. A lot of uh, and Damian Mizdow versus the Usos in a tag team match. It was an average. Um, tag team championship match It was like really average I didn't really pay I mean I paid attention to it Because Damian Mizdow He actually was doing all the moves And the crowd went crazy for Mizdow They they, they went crazy for that man They won it they, That man is over Damian Sandow or Mizdow Whatever you want to call him He is over he is over like nothing else, and he has uh, has a good future. But the uh, ending of this match, the winners is the Miz. Uh, the Usos won by disqualifications, but the Miz and Miz are still champions because the Miz grabbed a slammy and hit, I believe Jimmy Uso with it, and um, I think they hit Jay Uso with the after, after, and they just retained the championships and they held it up. Uh, that a lot really happened. Not a lot really happened in here. We just got um a lot of Damian Miz now, you know, uh, emulating the moves of the Miz spots. That's really all we got in this match. I didn't really see too much special in this match. I didn't really think this match was going to be that special. I think it was just... I thought this match was going to be more storyline driven with, you know, the Naomi situation trying to get into the head. And they was going to use that in the match, which would have made the match more interesting. But they didn't. And I'm so very surprised that they didn't do that. And it's okay because um, I want to see where this rivalry goes. If this is the end of the rivalry, okay. If this rivalry is going to continue to the Royal Rumble, which they probably will because they're going to need a tag team um, opponents. They're going to need an um, opponent for the Royal Rumble because I know they're going to defend the titles at the Royal Rumble. But then the next match we had, we had the first ever stairs match. What? The stairs match because this year they added stairs to the title and this is the first ever steel stairs match. It, I mean, I wasn't hyped for this match because I haven't been hyped for a Big Show match since 2011 when I was like 11 years old when I was a kid and you know Big Show was like the biggest thing going for like little kids or whatever. I wasn't hyped for this match. I really didn't care about this match, but the Big Show ended up winning this match. Uh, basically, Big Show dominated most of this match. Uh, Eric Rowan got into moves. I'm not going to lie. He did hit Big Show a couple times. But the ending, Big Show had choke slam Eric Rowan on the steps. And they hit him with the right hand and pinned him with the stairs on top of him. That's basically what happened. That I mean, it wasn't that much of a match per se. I mean, it wasn't that interesting to me. So I really didn't. I really did not care for this match at all. <laughs> I really didn't. But the next match we ended up having was the tables match between John Cena and Dolph Ziggler. And the stipulation was if Dolph Ziggler, I mean not Dolph Ziggler, if John Cena loses, he's no longer the number one contenders for Brock Lesnar's WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And actually earlier we found out that Brock Lesnar will defend. uh, He'll have his next championship fight at the Royal Rumble. So I guess whoever... Uh, if John Cena didn't win this match, then he wouldn't face Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. And the winner of this match is John Cena, but the match was actually good. I I, didn't, I mean, I knew that this match was going to be good because, first of all, it's a Seth Rollins match. And John Cena, they, John Cena they're both like two, one of, two of my like, favorite wrestlers in the WWE right now. Two of the hottest wrestlers probably in the WWE right now that are getting, that are up, that their momentum is up. They're getting, you know... They're getting well, you know, John Cena. He's always high because WWE's gonna keep him high because he's the guy. But um, what, uh, Seth Rollins is also a guy, a young talent. He's definitely the future of the WWE. Who's high in the momentum, has good mic work, who can wrestle. He can go. He can go for like a, a WWE championship match. He can go. He can go. And this match was actually good. We had J and J security interfering in this match a lot. But um, we actually had this one part where uh, what's his name? Jamie Noble got suplexed onto a barricade, a steel barricade, you know, them old school barricades. And he got suplexed onto that. And I was like, okay, that's cool. But that has nothing to do with the match. And actually, it was this one time. That it was this, this the first time they ever did this for a tables match, I believe, where both men went through a table and they had to do it by decision. So they ended up restarting the match. And when they restarted the match, John Cena took Seth Rollins out of the ring. The big show came out. He was about to knock out John Cena. And boom, the music dropped. I thought Randy Orton was going to return tonight because that's been on the dirt sheets. That's been on the rumors that Randy Orton's going to return. And he's going to cause Orton the match. But he's 
still going to attack Seth Rollins. But instead, Roman Reigns comes back. And I remember, I was wondering, when is Roman Reigns coming back? Because he said around this time, uh, he's going to return to the WWE from his uh, surgery. And he did. He came in. He Superman punched Big Show. He started uh, hitting Big Show with some couple right hands. Superman punched him and spit him through a table. Then he Superman punched Seth Rollins into an attitude adjustment through the table and John Cena won. So now at the World Rumble, we already have our WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. We have John Cena versus Brock Lesnar one more time in their series of matches. So that that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, I want to see where this is going to go. Is John Cena going to win the title? Is it Brock Lesnar going to keep the title? And then Brock Lesnar is going to have a match at um, WrestleMania. Because I'm really not getting tired of um, not having a championship match, a WWE World Heavyweight Championship match at our pay-per-views. Because we haven't had that many yet, and it's been a while. So I really... I'm really hope that Cena wins or Cena wins and Seth Rollins cashes in or something like that. But the next match we had, we ended up having the Divas match. The Divas match, we had Nikki Bella versus AJ Lee. This match was okay, you know. Um, uh, we had a couple spots. Nikki Bella ended up winning with the rack attack, but she actually sprayed in AJ Lee's eyes so she couldn't see, so she could cheat or whatever. This match, I mean, I barely paid attention to it. I mean, I watched it just because I had to watch it, but, I mean, it wasn't special. I mean, nothing happened except for the spray in the eyes and Brie Bella getting thrown out the arena. And we basically got to confirm, we basically confirmed that uh, the Bella Twins are back, I guess. So it's it's cool. It's just whatever. Um, Nikki Bella's still your dude's champion. But, um, yeah. So then the next match we had, we ended up having the chairs match. The chairs match between Ryback and Kane. This match was very barbaric, in my opinion. Beating with chairs. There's actually the chair bent where it looked like it got balled up like a piece of paper. Because Ryback was, like, dumb, and he had put the chair on top of Kane, and he tried to jump off the top rope. He tries to jump off the top rope and try to hit a splash off the top rope, but Kane put his knees up, and the chair looked all balled up, and that was, like, really cool how it looked. And then Kane started beating Ryback with chairs. Um, we had a setup where, um, what was his face? Kane got spine busted on to, like, a little chair setup that Kane made. Uh, Kane got a choke slam in, but I believe the finisher was right back. Got a, a me hook clothesline on Kane. I think it was on a chair. It was on the ground. He got the one, two, three, and he won the the chairs match. So that, that's that. Um, right back. It gives him more momentum uh, to go on because they're. I think they're trying to push right back like they were supposed to like two years ago, but then they turned them heel. He was supposed to be like going when he had his pursuits for the WWE Championship. So I think they're trying to push him and give him more momentum and try to get him at least a championship run because he still hasn't won a championship. So maybe he'll get a, a United States Championship match against Rusev because it, he's he has so much momentum he could probably beat Rusev or something like that. Maybe because Rusev's just beating everybody. But the next match we had we had the United States Championship match. We had Jack Swagger versus Rusev for the United States Championship. This match was short. I didn't really care about this match. We already know who's going to win. Rusev won. Uh, I think Jack Swagger, he moved his arm, I guess. I guess in a motion to tapping out, but I think they said that he uh, passed out. But Jack Swagger actually got out of the accolades at one point. But then and he reversed it into a uh, into the Patriot Act or the ankle lock or whatever. But then he ended up um, what did he end up doing? He ended up getting uh, two super kicks into another accolade. So that that was in that match. Rusev is still your champion. I mean, it doesn't matter. Rusev's still gonna win no matter what. So I really didn't care about this match. But that ended up bleeding us into the main event match. We had, ooh, just thinking about it. Oh my gosh, this is such an amazing match. Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose for the W. Oh no, not even a championship match, but it was the main event, a TLC match. One of probably one of the most craziest, one of the most creative, one of the most violent TLC matches that that you didn't even have to climb the ladder to win. It wasn't even a ladder match. It was just a TL, a regular. I'm gonna beat you with a table. I'm gonna beat you with a ladder, and I'm gonna put you through a table. 
Uh, I'm gonna put you through a table. I'm gonna beat you with a ladder. And I'm gonna beat you with a chair. And that's basically what this match was. Now the winner of this match was Bray Wyatt, and the ending of this match was crazy. It was unpredictable. Like I didn't expect it to happen, but it happened. That 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 was the type of ending. But uh, we got what well, I think we got what we wanted out of this match because the other match that they had at Survivor Series was okay. But it didn't really, I wouldn't say sell a story, but it didn't really give us the satisfaction that we would want. And that's basically what it did. Like, we basically had, you know, they had their match. Uh, um, Dean Ambrose beat Bray Wyatt with a chair, got disqualified, put him through a table. And then Connor Ladder would signify they're going to have their TLC match. But this match right here basically gave us what we, what we wanted in this rivalry. That we wanted them to be to destroy each other because because why not that's basically what they did that's basically what they did uh dean ambrose put bray wyatt through like two tables jumping off the ladder um dean ambrose i mean dean ambrose put bray wyatt through a table he elbow dropped off of the ladders he elbowed no no three times i forgot he elbow dropped them off of he elbow dropped off of the, the tallest ladder i think in the arena through the uh, Spanish announce table, which was crazy, but Bray Wyatt also hit some moves. Uh, he hit the sister Abigail. The, after he had put him through two tables, he put him back into the ring, and Bray Wyatt hit him with his sister Abigail. I was like, "Wow, that's crazy!" But the ending, well, really, the craziest thing about this is that Bray Wyatt basically got dominated in this match. Mostly, I like mostly all the moves that Dean Ambrose did. They were very impactful. Like they hurt. Or they were crazy moves. He got he beat Bray Wyatt with a chair. He put him through a table. Hit him with a ladder. Don't get me wrong. Bray Wyatt did some moves. He did some damage. But Dean Ambrose did more to Bray Wyatt than Bray Wyatt did to Dean Ambrose. But the winner ended up being Bray Wyatt. And the ending was crazy. So early in the match. Well, I wouldn't say earlier. But, like, you know, like probably 15 minutes before the ending, I think. Maybe 15 minutes. 10 minutes. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Dean Ambrose put out a TV. It was a TV monitor. He was just looking at it. He was looking at it, and then he and then after he looked at, it, he put it right there to the ring. So I knew that that TV monitor was gonna be very vital in this match because why would you pull out a TV monitor like a literally a flat screen TV out of nowhere? And then he went to go get that tall ladder to jump off of it and then put it very wide through the announce table. But he grabbed the TV, and when he pulled it, because I think he was going to hit Bray Wyatt with the TV, I guess it exploded. I'm going to say exploded, but it sparked off because I guess he broke the cores off or something. And it basically, poof, all in all in his head, hand and in his face, and it blinded him. And it led him into a sister, Abigail, from Bray Wyatt. And he ended up getting the one, two, three, and Bray Wyatt ended up winning the match. And the ending is a good ending. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's not like it's not like he got destroyed. He uh, the ending was that Dean Ambrose made a mistake and he ended up paying for that mistake and he ended up losing. And Bray Wyatt ended up winning. So I think that's probably gonna end the rivalry because there's nothing really you can go from from this rivalry. To be honest, maybe uh, they probably might do one more match, but not at the World Rumble because. The Royal Rumble, well, maybe at the Royal Rumble, because last Royal Rumble, we had, um, you know, Bray Wyatt versus uh, Daniel Bryan, their final rivalry match, because he ended up, you know, leading to uh, John Cena for their rivalry. So, that might they might have their final rivalry match at uh, Royal Rumble, but I doubt it. And now, I'm going to, you know, just talk about the pay-per-view at the, as a whole don't include a steel stairs match again. Just keep the steel stairs match as just like a match to half or a, um, a violent match. Is it? Don't worry, trust me. It's a violent match, but don't put it on the pay per view. Don't call it TLCs or tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs. Don't make it a part of the pay per view for next year. Just keep it as a match, just to have maybe a match to have as on the pole vault on the on um, pole on WWE.com or the WWE app or something, not or make it a match on Extreme Rules. Don't make it a match on the pay per view and don't make it part of the pay per view because that I mean it, it's a cool it's a cool concept of a match and I see where they was going, but I don't want them to add it to a already to a pay per view that already has a famous match behind it which is TLC. 
And yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna give this pay per view an eight out of ten because it did good, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to deliver so good because everybody expected it to be horrible because you know NXT or Evolution was incredible. You gotta see it if you got the WWE Network. See it if you don't see it. Uh, if you don't have WWE Network, find a way to see NXT or Evolution because that was probably the best WWE produced product of this year and probably of a couple of years now and you know people i uh, everybody expected to be crappy compared to nxt but uh it, it was decent it wasn't bad and this is wwe's final pay-per-view of 2014 but uh they could have did a lot more they could have did better the the, in, the uh, intercontinental championship match that was probably one of the best matches that match the uh, main event TLC match and maybe the uh, tables match was decent and yeah, yeah uh, that's probably the best matches but the rest they needed improvement or they needed or they was just bad or it was just bad but anyway guys you know to do like comment favorite, subscribe do to do support me support you um I'm working on getting that new Elgato because the like I said this other Elgato is like really messing up and I'm gonna work on getting the one that's for you know next gen for the PS4 so I can get that crispy clean 60 frames. I think I think I can get 60 frames off of the new one and I think I can work on getting face cams too and a lot of other stuff. So if I get the you know the HD60 by Christmas or something like that, I, I should be able to you know get some crispy gameplay gameplay out of that in 60 frames, which would be awesome. And then you can see the 60 frames on like Google Chrome or something. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. Peace. Yeet.